Hello and welcome to the Seahawkers podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Schultz. And yes, I am flying solo in this episode as I react to the Seahawks 22 to 14 victory over the Dallas Cowboys. The Seahawks moving to 2 and 0 in the preseason, hoping to make it 3 and 0 next week against the Packers. We're going to be running down the winners and the losers in this episode and looking forward to some of your feedback throughout the show. So if you did not tune in live, you can catch us hopefully next week on the Bleacher Report app. But let's get into this week's show. Man, oh man. Uh, we got to see some some exciting plays. We got to see some less than stellar plays uh, throughout the game as well. And so we're going to get into it. We're starting things off with our first poll question of the day. Biggest winner on the day, Boye Mafe. Oh, the votes are coming in for Boye big time. Jake Bobo. Also some, some nice special teams play by the Seahawks out there. And Jackson Smith and Jigba votes coming in so far. 11 people voting for Boye Mafe. And man, was Mafe all over the field to start this game? He was a starter on the opposite end of the defensive line. He finishes the day. Uh, just one tackle, but... Uh, Man, oh man, he was he was in the backfield. He was deflecting passes. He was in pursuit, getting pressure on the quarterback. And Mafe, when you talk about stacking performances, we we saw some nice performances from him in Week One, and yeah, we we got to see some more of us, uh, more plays from Mafe. Stoner twelve for life in the chat. Mafe killed it. Rollin forty five. Mafe absolutely. And yeah, we've got uh, Yusef Hadi sixteen saying. Boy, Mafe was absolutely disgusting. So a lot of people pointing out the fact that, yes, Mafe had an outstanding game for the Seahawks in this game. And who else? Who else do we need to call out? Because getting second place among the voters with 22%, Jackson Smith and Jigba, JSN. And why don't we go over and check out his stat line on offense? Because he got three targets on the day. Three receptions, 58 yards, a majority of those 58 yards was on a 48-yard pass, and that one was by Drew Locke. And what was the better part of that? Was it JSN with the catch, or was it Drew Locke with the throw? Because JSN, he did not have a whole lot of separation. He, he did get behind the defensive back, but we got to see that throw by Locke just right over the shoulder of JSN. And yeah, just dropped it right in there. He picks up the big gain, almost gets into the end zone. Not quite, but uh, big play by JSN. And, and just to see him, it was, it was that play. Uh, you also had the play over on the left side where Gino just put a nice dart uh, to JSN as he was going out of bounds. And then I think there was another just short dump off pass to him as well. Um, but overall, nice play. No drops from him. Definitely want to see more from him as we keep on going. Let's see, who else in those tallies? did we see from the poll? So looking on down the list, Jake Bobo got a couple votes and Bobo on the day. Uh, when we're, when we're looking at the, the receivers, only two catches, 43 yards, but a nice deep pass uh, that he got from Drew Locke. And no, that was the one from Geno Smith because uh, it was Geno backed up into his end zone. And you saw Bobo, especially if you looked at the replay he cuts it inside, and then he does the double move and goes deep, and Geno Smith hits him on a 28-yard pass. Real nice play from Bobo. But not only did Bobo have those nice couple catches on offense, it was Bobo on special teams as well. We, we saw him down on coverage team. We saw him in on the, uh, on the block punt. He was in the end zone. He was the one who blocked the punt, but we saw Bobo out there. There was also uh, one of the plays from Bobo that uh, it helped keep the Seahawks on the field. I don't know what he said to the Cowboys defensive back, but it was enough to get a penalty called, kept the offense out on the field. They were able to drive and get a score, and that helped the offense as well. So I, Pete looked a little bit upset at him. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what that was all about. Maybe we'll, that's one of those things that I want to check out the post game press conference and, and see if the reporters asked anything about that particular play. And uh, we, we did get a lot of love for Bobo. Question from Stoner12 for Life in the chat. Do you play Brown more than Jackson or too soon? And 
Uh, I, I think you know where I'm going with this one because when we look at winners, we we made the rundown. Special teams, we can come back to that as well. That was uh, that one didn't fare so well in the poll. Uh, but when we talk about biggest losers in this game, this poll question coming up right now. Officiating, I have got that up there. Third down offense for the Seahawks. Not a stellar day necessarily for the offense. Seahawks running backs. I'll, I'll tell you why I had that on the list in particular. And then I see the polls coming in right now. Mike Jackson in the lead, but uh, only only six votes so far. So we'll see if that hangs in there as to uh, who ends up winning uh, in the biggest loser side. And maybe a lot of you don't want to vote in, in the biggest loser side because, hey, do we really want to pick who the biggest loser is for the Seahawks? But it uh, it was a rough game for Mike Jackson, not only given up a couple big catches early. He had a pass deep downfield where he got flagged for pass interference. That flag was declined, obviously. And it made you wonder who we're going to see playing defensive back because Trey Brown, obviously he had uh, the interception in the game. He had some other nice tackles. You know, will we see when it's, when we're, we're seeing game one, week one, who's lining up because we hope that Reek Woolen is back out there and healthy. Who's going to be lining up that side opposite? Maybe it'll be Jackson. Maybe he bounces back. Maybe, you know, are we going to see him in preseason week three? Is that one of the players that you're hoping to see more from to pull ahead and uh, show something off here in week three before we get to regular season? Are you hoping Trey Brown jumps out, takes that spot from, uh, away from Jackson? Do we maybe see more Devin Witherspoon on the outside once he's going to be healthy? It's it's really a tough call, I think, as to what they're going to end up doing in that spot. Because really, corner is a position of relative strength that we expected for the Seahawks defense. And when they were going after Mike Jackson with Jalen Tolbert, of all players, you know, it wasn't Brandon Cooks, it wasn't C.D. Lamb, it was Jalen Tolbert. So, um, yeah, just a, a bit of a rough showing. Officiating, one of the reasons why I had this up there, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll won a challenge, people, against this officiating crew. That that doesn't normally happen. So uh, we saw uh, officiating, missed calls throughout the game. Uh, obviously, Pete had the one. There was the one along the sideline where Sir Roderick Thompson stepped out of bounds a little bit early. And then the officiating crew, they brought out the chains on, what was it? It was fourth and one. They did the measurement, and it was a full yard short. I don't know if I've ever necessarily seen the the call out the officiating crew call out the chains for a fourth and one that was that far short. You can see, unless they were mistaking the lines, not sure about that. Uh, see, I can I, I can already tell in chat nobody wants to talk about losers. Driftwood eighty four wants to talk about Drew Locke playing well and looking at the stat line. Drew Locke five of six for one hundred nineteen yards. Didn't get to see a whole lot of Drew Locke because he did go out with an injury. Uh, he was looked at in the tent when he got the low tackle. They, they were The Cowboys were flagged for it, 15-yard penalty, and he ended up coming out of the game. Holt Nailers comes in uh, for that final drive of the first half. Not able to do a whole lot with that first half. But yeah, Drew Locke, uh, especially going back to that throw to JSN, uh, real nice. But yeah, 5 of 6, 119 yards. Had Gino coming in, 5 of 6 for 46 yards. Locke obviously helped out by the long pass to Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, over the top of the defense. But nice to see Gino out there. Would have liked to see the perform, you know, like to see him out there a little bit more, but a big part of that. And one of the things that I've had on the loser side of the polls was the Seahawks running backs. And they could not get going early on against that Dallas Cowboys defense. And yes, it's it's a very tough defensive line, but I I wanted to see more out of Zach Charbonnet in particular. He got the start, which was nice to see for the second round draft pick, and he was one of the ones that I I wanted to watch. But on his first two carries, it was two carries, two yards. Charbonnet did have a 29 yard run, but a big part of that too, it was just an absolute wide hole that uh, he had to run through. Nobody there, really in pursuit, still able to pick up the big gain. And so it was It was thrown off in terms of the rushing stats for the Seahawks. 
So Roderick Thompson ends the day, 11 carries, 50 yards, and he did have the touchdown. DJ Dallas had a touchdown as well, but DJ Dallas is average five and nine. So average of under two yards per carry and Charbonnet, uh, he had a nice 10 yard average, but he, he had the one big play that was throwing that off. So Roderick Thompson, 11 carries, 50 yards. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty decent average, but he also did have the one long play down the sideline give up play on third and long, which brings me to third down offense for the Seahawks in this game. It was not good. Can you remember which conversions happened for the Seahawks on third down? There weren't very many of them, so uh, it's, it's going to be tough to try and pick them out. The very first third down conversion, it was Geno Smith on a third and one, and it was a sneak. And we did not see a third down conversion by the Seahawks offense until it was either the third or the fourth quarter. But the next third down conversion was the give up play on third and 15 where Sir Roderick Thompson got around to the left side. It, it was a, a long run. It ended up getting called back for, I think it was an, ended up being a 17 yard run because he stepped out of bounds. But yeah, not, not a good day for the Seahawks. And then the last one that I remember was uh, Ehlers with a throw over the middle to number 81, who had the nice punt return in the game, too. That was about it for the Seahawks and the third down offense. So not super impressive uh, when it came to the the Seahawks. And, and fortunately, it's still able to move, move the ball enough to get 22 points, but a big reason for that is because they were moving the ball on first and second down, and then when they got to the third down, the, the, the offense just sputtered. But. Special teams, going back to them, there were some nice special teams plays. Uh, in particular, Jason Myers, 57-yard field goal. I know probably people are going to focus on the, the one miss toward the end of the game. That, uh, that was not super fun. But uh, we also had the, special, the, the blocked punt that resulted in two points that helped, helped put the, the lead almost out of reach for the Cowboys. I suppose if uh, things would have... You know, they're probably looking for a touchdown and a two-point conversion there at the end of the game. But we did get to see some nice moments uh, between the return, between the long field goal kick, between the block punt. One more poll going up for those of you hanging out with me in chat. And the most p competitive groups, most competitive position groups going into preseason week three. And part of this might be, you know, what do you want to see in terms of those depth guys where they come out. I'm seeing a chat, you know, a lot more Jake Bobo talk just because, yeah, hey, yeah, he's, uh, he's been showing up in every single preseason game. I'm, I'm trying not to, to fall in love with a particular wide receiver. I see Stoner 12 for Life seeing Landers, Defense God seeing Lindsey. Obviously, the wide receiver group, very intriguing for many of us going into this final game. And that's where that's where folks are landing in the poll right now with wide receiver coming up on top. 63% of you saying wide receiver, the most competitive position group. Cornerback, not a bad answer either with 25% falling into the quarterback group, especially with the way Mike Jackson played in this game. Offensive line, one thing that I thought was interesting, I, we, we had the question of whether or not on the offensive line who we were going to see out there with the starters on that first team. And it was Evan Brown and not Olu, Olu Atimi. Why don't we why don't we look at some of the starters? Because we did have a few of the Seahawks reporters out on X.com uh, with some nice insight that I want to share with you here before we get on out of here tonight. Brady Henderson, he had the starting lineups on the day for the for both the defense and the offense, running down the starters for the defense. You had Uchenna Numosu out there, an outside linebacker. Jaron Reed and Draymond Jones up the middle for the defense. And then Boye Mafe, who we got to see extended time from, and he was all over the field. But those four, probably going to be your starting four when it comes to week one against the Rams. Maybe not the starters that we would expect at linebacker, obviously, with Patrick O'Connell getting the start, which... And when we're talking about winners and losers, uh, how about Patrick O'Connell going from linebacker out of University of Montana and able to break the starting lineup in preseason week two, lining up next to 
linebacker Devin Bush. I thought that was kind of cool to see. Uh, and then you had your starting corners with Reek Woolen out, with Devin Witherspoon out. You had Jonathan Sutherland in there at the nickel spot. Mike Jackson, who presumably is the starter uh, at that right side. Julian Love, we would presume, is the starter. And then starters on the offensive side of the ball. We got Geno Smith out there at quarterback playing two series. Zach Charbonnet, we'd expect to see Kenneth Walker, I think, in that spot starting week one against the Rams. He's, he's looking like he's going to be back and healthy from what we've seen in practice so far. And then lining up at receiver, Jackson Smith and Jigba. We did see Tyler Lockett come out on the opening drive, but it was a, a heavy tight end package to start the game with Will Disley, Colby Parkinson, and Noah Fant, your top three tight ends. And then the starting offensive line, left tackle Charles Cross, left guard Damian Lewis, center Evan Brown, right guard Phil Haynes, and right tackle Abe Lucas. So that's that's what I would expect when it comes to the offensive line. Unless we see something change with Oluwatimi at center, unless we see Bradford showing off more in that preseason week three, I just I don't think I expect to see uh, any big changes when it comes to when it comes to that offensive line group and Aggie Seahawk and others in the chat too mentioning, and I think that was uh, it, Brady Henderson mentioning that uh, Seneca Wallace was the 12 flag raiser, but before the national anthem, the Seahawks, they did hold a moment of silence for Alex Collins who passed away in a motorcycle accident earlier this week. And just a, a sad, sad moment earlier this week to, to see the loss of the former Seahawks running back. But it was nice. It definitely was nice that they had that moment for him in the preseason game. And yeah, so, hey, before we get on out of here, any other questions in the chat? Any other commentary that we want to see? Bo Bear, yes, Mike Jackson, he did get cooked in this game. Also going through, let's see if Brady mentioned anything that uh, we, we uh, didn't necessarily cover here. Uh, Seahawks number two, O-line. As they started the fourth possession, Stone Forsyth left tackle, Greg Island left guard. Oh, Joey Hunt. Well, Olu Timmy wasn't playing tonight. I was wondering why I didn't see a whole lot of him. It's because he wasn't out there. Uh, I usually go back and I watch the offensive line after the actual game. I, I'm more interested in the position players as the preseason game's going on. But uh, Anthony Bradford, Jake Curran, so very similar. I think we'd expect Olu Timmy in that. But he has been dealing with an elbow injury throughout the week. So. They may just be, uh, a team might just want to rest him a little bit and make sure he can go out there and then play some more in that third preseason game. Maybe he'll get some extended time. Maybe he'll have an opportunity to show us a little something more before we get into the regular season. But it is kind of feeling like that spot is locked up then by Evan Brown. Bell did great in back-to-back -back games. That's true. And uh, we, not only did we get to see Bell on the defensive side of the ball, we got to see him laying the lead block as I believe it was Thompson that got into the end zone. We got to see a nice little moment to where Thompson handed off the ball back to Bell, who did the line blocking. And so that was cool to see. Aggie Seahawks saying, which running backs make the cut? Obviously K-9, obviously Charbonnet. Um, I think DJ Dallas is an obvious one for me. Not necessarily because we've seen anything outstanding for him in the preseason. I just think he's been that proven performer at running back. And then... I tend to think that we're going to see uh, the Georgia running back also into that fourth spot. So didn't get to see a lot from him either this week, but um, I just, I don't know if we've seen enough from, from Thompson and Kobach through the preseason that would, where you would say that they would crack that starting running back group. No Fant also looked good. Wasn't on a field. Yes, Frost, but it was nice to see Fant out there getting a nice catch. Yeah, there's our live executive producer, Frost, in the chat. So thanks, Ryan, for joining us. Defense shut down a couple screens. That was exciting. And I see Stoner 12 for Life saying, yeah, run defense still worrying for me. But really on the day, Rico Dodal had 38 yards on eight carries. Davis had 32 yards on eight carries. So when you look at the, the running game for Dallas as a whole, the defense held them under 100 yards, just 94 yards. For the Cowboys, compared to the 141 yards for the Seahawks, and I wouldn't say it was all that stellar for Seattle. I, I think the reason why it probably looks different for the Cowboys versus the Seahawks on those, let's see, what was it, um, outside of Greer's two carries, 
Uh, you're looking at 16, 19, 24 rushes. And so a lot of those Cowboys rushes, when they weren't getting stopped in the backfield, they were getting some of those consistent gains. And so maybe that's why it looked a little bit different. But uh, toward the end of the game, we were seeing some of those nice stops in the backfield as well. Still, I, I don't think it was huge gains um, throughout the day. I, I think the running game that we saw early on is something that we could live with. It's not as disastrous as it was last season. It may not be you know, the 3.5 yards per carry that we'd prefer to see, but it is an improvement. It, it's definitely an improvement over what we were seeing last season. So the Seahawks, they get the win 22-14. They go to 2-0 and on the preseason, and it was nice to see them get the win. They're heading on over to Green Bay for that final preseason game. Hey, hopefully our Seahawks can close this thing out and go 3-0 and in the postseason. And we will be back here talking more Seahawks. And I think with that, there's only one thing left to say. Go Hawks! Go Hawks!